Welcome football fans to Norta Vista High School as the Braves are hosting Citrus Hill for the Eastern Division Championship tonight on campus at Novi. I'm Pep Fernandez. Chris Erickley will join us in just a second. But the big news tonight out of Norta Vista, their star running back, Freddie Hawley, injured in practice this week. That is Hawley on the bike right now wearing number one. Coach Batdorf told our reporters before the game that he was injured, did not expect him to play, but was still holding out maybe some hope that Holly would see some action, but we will find out as they take on the Hawks in just about 30 minutes here from Norta Vista High School. Javier, if we can come back over here to Chris and myself. We're going to break down the Braves and the Hawks, Chris, in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the game you'll be heading to in just a little bit. Vista Marietta taking on Centennial for the Inland Division Championship. I'll be zipping down the 91, then getting on a short trip onto the 15 to Centennial High School. It seems to be a classic matchup the last four years. Vista, Marietta, and Centennial. Pep, uh, the last year it was a nail-biter, a two-point game came down to a dropped, uh, highly contested two-point conversion for, uh, by Sua Cravens in the end zone that would have forced overtime. Uh, Centennial won that game by two points. Keep the talking about that, Chris. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that up. Go ahead. The year before, it was Vista Marietta and Centennial at uh, Vista Marietta once again. Uh, Vista Marietta did win that game by seven. They were actually undefeated on the season, but due to a... Uh, controversial uh, decision uh, Vista Marietta felt about uh, violations regarding a player's grades after he had transferred from a different school on the East Coast. Uh, they were actually had to forfeit five games that season. They didn't get to make it to a bowl. This year though we do imagine with Vista Marietta only one loss and Centennial at two losses a very good chance that the winner of that Vista Marietta Centennial game uh, tonight in the Inland Division, we'll have a chance at a Division I bowl game, uh, maybe a slight chance at an open bowl game, but most likely the Division I bowl game. And of course, after last week, uh, a lot of chatter about uh, Colton Gearhart when he faced off against his old team, Norco, now, this time as a member of the Vista Marietta Broncos. Now his chance at his first CIF title game. Of course, the Broncos did win two years ago. A couple of these guys have been there before, but Colton Gearhart, his first crack at a CIF title game, and what better than to face off against Centennial? Yeah, a team he's very familiar with uh, from the Big 8 when he played at Norco, as you mentioned. So here was the press enterprise when we made our picks this week, right? Yes, very so, controversial all over the place. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's really hard to pick, and we are pretty much split on this one between uh, Vista Marietta and Centennial. I think it was uh, like Five for Centennial and four for Vista, I think the breakdown was. Do you remember the great Cameron Hunt? He was a uh, star player for Centennial last season. He was, yes. Went to the He's University. Oregon now. Yes, he plays for the Oregon Ducks, starting on the offensive line for the Oregon Ducks. He hit me up on Twitter and said, Pep, I cannot believe you picked Vista Marietta uh, for the second year in a row because last year, they yeah, Hav, I was wrong. Yeah, Centennial won, and when I went to Matt Logan after the game, the you he know gave I said me some heat. I did. I, you know, he did. I said, "Hey, coach, congratulations on the win." He's like, "Pep, you picked Vista." <laughs> so, uh, coach, uh, he's a great sport. He was joking, and uh, he kind of busted my chops a little bit. But Cameron's right. I, I did pick Vista last year. I picked Vista again in the newspaper this time around, and I, I told you this, and I told Cameron this on Twitter. It's like picking which one of your kids is your favorite. If you're a parent, you're like, do you like him or her better? Well, you can't do that with Vista Moran and Centennial. I mean, every year you could pick either one and still have a great chance of picking the champion in this division. In Centennial, Vista Marietta part one, uh, Centennial did have the upper hand, but in the last two matchups, they have went down basically to the last drive, especially last year, went down to the last play. Pep, you gotta imagine the same deal this year. Yeah, I'd imagine this is not going to be a uh, game where one side's going to blow out the other. We had Coach Vinny Fazio, head coach from Murrieta Valley on the Blitz this last week, and he said if you've looked at the last couple of games, you'll see one of the teams maybe jump out to a you know a two-touchdown lead possibly, but the other team always seems to reel them in. There's a, a feeling out process where the other teams are just kind of getting used to each other. Maybe one team comes out slow, a little you know uh, lackadaisical. Maybe the other team's a little anxious or you know feeling the tension. So by the second quarter, I think both teams will have settled down and we'll kind of have a good game going forward out of there. So, Chris, what are your keys to the game for Vista and Centennial? Key to the game, uh, obviously, for Vista Marietta is to stop Trey Watson. You saw Trey Watson early in the season when they faced up against Long Beach Poly, and I don't think he even cracked the 100-yard mark. Last week he had 500 yards and about six touchdowns. The guy was ridiculous. Looked like uh, Barry Sanders coming back to play high school football. 
This week, I think Vista Marietta would consider it a victory to keep him uh, probably under 200 yards and two or three touchdowns. Uh, he's as dominant as a running back as you're going to find in Southern California. For Centennial, I, I think their key is to keep a handle on Colton Gearhart because Nick Stevens was a great quarterback last year for Vista Marietta, but I think the, the throwing and running uh, combo for Gearhart is even stronger. And uh, Centennial not known for their defense. I, I, I feel like at any time if uh, Gearhart feels a little pressure in the pocket, he could easily bust off a 30, 40 yard run. Yeah, he's a great runner, runs in the family, I guess you could say, with his brother Toby Gerhardt in the National Football League. But he was out to prove he can throw, We've, and you've seen him do it plenty of times this season for Vista Marietta. Yeah, he's got Cook, Baker, the candlestick maker, That's all his right. favorite <laughs> targets out there. I think he's got like 25, uh, uh, he's ran for about 25 touchdowns, but I think he's thrown at least 20 touchdowns as well. And when you have a dynamic uh, dual threat quarterback like that, he's definitely raised the team to another level this year. Uh, with Tito Feliciano, he also takes care of business in, in the uh, backfield for Vista Marietta, but definitely having Gearhart this year has kind of upped the dimension, the, the danger of, of their offense. I also think that their defense, despite uh, losing Sua Cravens, uh, who's now a star at USC, I think all around, pound for pound, their, the Vista Marietta Bronco defense did take a, a step up this year. Yeah, with uh, Buzzy Bolton leading Buzzy the way, Bolton, yeah, heading yeah. to Oklahoma. And uh, who's it? Tyler Cook is the other big star at defensive end for Vista Marietta. Now, uh, Chris, let's move away for a second. Javier, let's zoom in on the warm ups here for Norda Vista taking on Citrus Hill. Now, this is a final where the Hawks are going for back to back CIF championships for a second time in school history. And uh, Eric Zomal always has his crew ready to go. They've got a new quarterback in Brett Hollingsworth, who is a transfer from King High School. Meanwhile, for Norta Vista, the Braves are hosting their first CIF championship game on campus. So a special night here for Norta Vista. As we mentioned, Freddie Hawley, one of those star running backs for the Braves, injured this week in practice. His status is up in the air, although head coach Ken Batdorf said he does not expect him to play. But Do we we'll know what the injury is? Uh, I don't. Kyle Glazer, uh, one of our two reporters at the game, was trying to track that down. It sounds like it might be an ankle injury, but we'll see. I saw Freddie Hawley running across the track, not limping, not hobbling, but running across the track, and he is suited up. So we'll see what happens. Freddie Hawley is half of that thunder and lightning running back combo for Norta Vista with Andrew Martinez. Martinez, the big fella that rumbles. Freddie Hawley, more of the quick slasher for uh, that Norta Vista running game. And uh, when you're talking about the Braves, you got to talk about the Headland twins as well, Michael and Kevin. One's the quarterback, the other a linebacker. And uh, the linebacker actually leads, Chris, the entire nation in tackles. He's wow. got over 200. Believe Not that. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Yeah, so he'll be busy trying to chase down Brett Hollingsworth, who has plenty of weapons on the offensive side of the ball for the Hawks. Of course, they've got Jacoby Herring and Justin Clarkson as their wideouts. And uh, P.J. Walker, who's been doing it for a couple years now. Now, Pep, uh, Citrus Hill has kind of been here, done that. They've won the CIF championship. They were the champs last year, as we all know. But they got a lot of personnel changes. Hodge is out of the picture now. K.J. Young out of the picture. P.J. Walker back. But Norda Vista, not a lot of people when the season began probably expected them to be playing in this game right now. Do you think that kind of works in their favor, uh, viewing them as the underdog? I think so. I think they've got a chip on their shoulder as well because a lot of teams thought that, hey, maybe they shouldn't even be in the playoffs after having to forfeit those games for using an illegal player. But on the field, they've won the game. So they, you know, com competitively, they deserve to be here because they did win those games. But, you know, a lot of people are still whispering, well, they're in the finals, but maybe they shouldn't belong in the, you know, in the playoffs at all after having to forfeit those games and their River Valley League championship. But you can't argue with what the Braves have done on the field. They've gone out and won the games. Their only loss to Adam Drexler's King Wolves this season. But other than that, their only on-field loss um, was the king, but they, I mean they're on a roll. They've got plenty of weapons. I just saw Victor Gonzalez, the receiver who's headed to the University of Nevada. He might be a guy that's going to be called upon if Freddie Hawley cannot run the ball. So I think Norda Vista, you know, they want to do it for the first time on campus and win that title. And as you mentioned, Chris Citrus Hill, I mean, this is old hat for them. They're, they're always back in the finals with Eric Zomalt leading the way. Now, Pep, this may be a stretch, but how's this for foreshadowing? About okay. two years ago, I followed Norda Vista to an inner squad preseason scrimmage at the Rose Bowl. And at the end, they had a team huddle. They talked about how their vision, their quest was to play for a CIF championship. It didn't happen that year, but a short two years later, destiny has found them. 
on their own home turf playing for a CIF title. <laughs> You're right. So that would have been the spring of 2011, right? Correct. Does that sound about right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Ken Batdorf, I believe, if I did my math right, uh, 19, 20 years here at, at Norda Vista High School. And, quite a uh, tenure. Yeah, it's quite a tenure. He's one of the most respected coaches in the area, and he's trying to pick up a, uh, a championship for Norda Vista. Their first in 36 years, but their, their first championship game actually being played here on campus. So we'll see if they can get it done against Citrus Hill. And, uh, Chris, I was covering the Citrus Hill Moreno Valley game last week, and if you go walking up and down the Citrus Hill sideline, a lot of former players still have all the bling, all the rings yeah, on to kind of off. Yeah, to remind the other players, hey, this is what you play for. If you can uh, cap off the season with a victory, then this is what you're going to end with, another CIF championship ring, which would be uh, Citrus Hill's fourth CIF title in the Eastern Division. Seeing Citrus Hill earlier in the year, they looked a little bit kind of complacent at times, uh, playing to their opponent's level. I think uh, I wasn't expecting them to blow out Moreno Valley in that extreme fashion that they did. Maybe Coach Zomalt, I think, fired up the guys and told them, hey, it's business time. This is when it matters most because, Pep, that Moreno Valley team last week that they beat by, what, 40 points was no slouch. Yeah, Moreno Valley was coming off a couple of huge wins, including um, a win against Serrano in the quarterfinals. A lot of people had Serrano in this CIF championship game, and Moreno Valley held them to just seven points, and Serrano's one touchdown came off a, uh, a Moreno Valley turnover that was deep in their own territory, and Serrano punched it in, and that was the only points that Moval defense gave up the entire game. So for Citrus Hill to hang 60 on Moval in the semifinals was quite impressive. And uh, they're always good on offense. So many great players and uh, that Norda Vista defense, which is very good. The Headland kids got, like we said, over 200 tackles. So they will be put to the test against the Citrus Hill offense, that's for sure. Are you expecting a high scoring affair tonight or maybe a game hanging around in the 30s? Um, you know what? I could see it in the high 20s, maybe like a 30 to 28, 28, 24, something like that. We, uh, we had Vinny Fazio on, as we mentioned, on the Blitz this past week. And he kind of echoed what Ken Batdorf was saying that they were hoping for rain and cold weather because apparently the rain's tomorrow. The night, so yeah, they, they were one night. They, sure. they just missed it, <laughs> but they wanted the rain. They wanted the cold weather. They play on you know real grass out here as opposed to the artificial turf at Citrus Hill because if they could slow down the game, kind of grind it out, run the ball, and uh, prevent Citrus Hill from using their passing game, they thought they could have a better shot and kind of. Equal, uh, level this game out, the great equalizer between the two schools. Now that weather could come into a factor tomorrow night when it's Heritage and Rancho Verde, because Heritage with uh, HIFO and company, they definitely like to play that power run game. Uh, Rancho Verde, of course, likes to air it out. They've got a lot of uh, very dangerous receivers. Uh, Pep, I, you got to think that Heritage may be praying to the rain gods for tomorrow night. Hey, Chris, excellent segue, because let's go to the Central Division now. This is a Saturday night game, and yeah, you know, Heritage is, is I guess, kind of like Norda Vista here, that they want to, they can run the ball. They do pass once in a while, and it is effective, but they like to run the ball. They've got that physical, strong defense. And Rancho Verde, the Rancho Verde, similar to um, what Citrus Hill does, you know, a lot of good skill position players, and they can put a lot of points on the board. And, yes, they, it is supposed to rain tomorrow. Will it rain at game time? We'll have to find out. But if it is raining, you got to think that's Heritage's uh, favor right there. My last check of weather.com had a 90% chance of rain with about a quarter inch falling. Do they have turf or grass over there at Rancho? It's, I think turf. it's turf. Right? It's turf. So it should play a little bit more in their favor, at least better than when I went to that Chaparral Centennial game down in Temecula a few weeks ago. You could have had a Muddy mess, right? over there. Yeah, you almost had to call in Cal Fire to rescue people off the field. <laughs> Well, you know, Sharon Jones, the quarterback for the Rancho Verde, he broke his leg. Do you remember that last year? Yes. About that was his first game back, wasn't it? it uh, I think he played in the semifinals in the playoffs last year, and then he played in the finals. He did not start the game, but he played in the second half. But I, when I talked to him, actually a couple months ago before the season even began, he said how hard it was to watch the Mustangs playing and not be able to get on the field and help them. I think he put it as he wanted to lead his team out of the wilderness, like they were lost and they, ne they needed some direction. So here's Sharon Jones' chance. He's only a junior, already one of the most prized recruits in the class of 2015. Yeah, he's definitely got a, a quite a few more games under his belt as well, a more experienced Rancho Verde. I think this is their fourth consecutive year making it to the Central CIF game. Uh, two years ago, they beat Palm Springs. The year before that, I believe they lost to Colton. And last year, as you mentioned, lost to Kaiser. This year, Heritage 
Heritage actually uh, used to be in the Eastern. They switched over That's to correct. the Central. Uh, two years ago, we saw them play Summit. It was Heritage and Summit at Heritage. They fell just short. You got to imagine that uh, Coach Broach and the guys uh, definitely want a chance to redeem themselves. Well, they have been so good in the Sun Belt League. 20 and 0 overall for Heritage. They're used to winning league titles. They do so well in the regular season, but that CIF title still eludes them. A lot of people were going on Twitter saying this was the season to complete unfinished business and finally get that CIF ring. And uh, but the Rancho Verde, you know, they're like Citrus Hill, just being accustomed to playing for CIF titles. You were there in 2011, the last time they won a title at Palm Springs. Yeah, and, they, they were very impressive. Uh, as uh, I have mentioned a few times, I'm a Palm Springs uh, grad. <laughs> I, I was hoping for a Palm Springs W, as unbiased as a as a journalist can be. Uh, but Rancho Verde uh, with Carlos Hernandez uh, at the quarterback uh, at that time now, Sharon Jones, uh, they are very uh, dangerous air attack. They just out uh, outscored Palm Springs in all facets of the game. Last year, Kaiser kind of caught them by surprise. Uh, I think uh, Rancho Verde was pretty much viewed as a heavy favorite, but Kaiser, uh, last year, one of those kind of defensive grinder teams, similar to what Heritage is. So if, if you're Heritage, I would maybe be watching some of that tape from last year when Kaiser defeated Rancho Verde and maybe take a few of their secrets. You're right. Uh, that was a low scoring game. It was like 10 to 7 or 12 to 7. It was something, uh, it was a real random score, but Kaiser uh, did pull out that win against Heritage last year in the semi. So that's the Central Division Championship Saturday night, just game time on Saturday night. The other game, Chris, on Saturday night is the East Valley Division Championship as Harupa Hills will host St. Margaret's from San Juan Capistrano. And Harupa Hills, the top seed in this division, St. Margaret's the number two seed. So we've got that one versus two for the championship. So it kind of worked out that way. It's Orange County versus uh, the IE, right? Uh, the IE, who can uh, – St. Margaret's is a proven commodity, though, are they not? They are. They've uh, they've gone through a lot of our local teams. Uh, they beat Linfield Christian pretty handily in Temecula earlier this season. They beat Rim of the World. St. Margaret's has been a staple of the East Valley Division in terms of making deep playoff runs. So, Harupa Hills, this will be their final shot at an East Valley Division championship because they'll join the San Andreas League next year, which would put them in the Eastern Division for the playoffs. So, Harupa Hills hoping to uh, play their final season in the East Valley and uh, wrap it up with a CIF championship ring. They've got a ton of talent. Uh, I would say the favorite. They are the top seed in this game, and they've got a ton of playmakers. They're led by their quarterback, DJ Wright, only a junior as well, like Sharon Jones at the Rancho Verde. Um, and he, he's a playmaker. He's definitely be counted on tonight, and we'll see if the Spartans can do it on their home field. And we're always rooting for the IE teams over the OC teams. There have been quite a few nail biters in that Easter, East Valley. Uh, that game against Rim, uh, it went into overtime and came down to what a two-point conversion it did it? And, and you know what and st margaret's beat uh, another one of our locals big bear in overtime in yes. the semifinal. so st margaret's that game was at st margaret's at right? st margaret's correct so uh if it was at big bear it might have been a different, a different story, story. Uh, cold temperatures up on the mountain but you know st margaret's uh give them credit they have uh, kind of snuck into the cif championship game meanwhile harupa hills uh they've been having a great season blowing a lot of teams out but last week in the semifinals. They won 40 to 39, a one point win against Western Christian in Upland, and they scored a touchdown in the final seven seconds of the game. And the extra point on that touchdown was the difference that gave them the victory. So, Chris, real quick before we wrap things up, we've got the four divisions that feature local teams. You want to make your picks on the air right now in the four divisions? I'll recap them real quick. Uh, I've got Harupa Hills in the East Valley, the Me one too. we were just talking about. I have Heritage. Uh, taking out Rancho Verde uh, last year, I picked Rancho Verde. They, they let me down, and <laughs> I, I feel like Heritage ha has a pretty similar uh, type of brand of football compared to what Kaiser was bringing to the table. Actually, Heritage a little bit more dangerous on offense as well with uh, Virgil and company. But uh, also flipping it over to the inland division, I've got Vista Marietta and Centennial. I I, I pondered this one for like 30 <laughs> You're minutes. losing sleep about this yeah, one. Yeah, I was like losing sleep. Me too. Because it's so close, and any time we pick against a team, we, we get like death threats practically I know. from people. They get so fired up <laughs> They can take it. this very seriously <laughs> when we make our picks. I have Vista Marietta over Centennial and a nail biter at Centennial. And then tonight on this field, I had to go with Citrus Hill. They came in and took care of business and dominated last year. Norda Vista, a great team. They've made a great run, but I'm giving it to the veterans. I agree with all your picks. I've got Harupa Hills and Heritage on Saturday night. 
I've got Citrus Hill here behind us against Norda Vista, and then the Inland Division Championship. I told you off the air that on our Blitz show, I went with Centennial, <laughs> and in the newspaper, I went with Vista Marietta, although I thought in the paper I picked Centennial, but I, I guess I picked Vista Marietta, so I don't know. I've been flip-flopping. I'm kind of what known are you, for a that. Politician? I am. I should be running for some political <laughs> office because I just go back and forth and flip-flop with uh, what people want to hear. I guess. But I, I honestly think tonight because Centennial's home, I, I'd go with Centennial, even though in the paper said I, uh, I had Vista Marietta. But I think it'll be high scoring. You want to throw you, out a score you on pick, that? Uh, yeah, uh, we did have that as our tiebreaker game online on the HS Game Time. I went. 49-42 Vista Marietta because you know that no matter who Centennial is playing against, they could be playing against the uh, Seattle Seahawks, and I still think they'd throw up at least 30 points. But uh, Centennial is going to get their points up tonight, but I just think that Vista will be able to make a few more stops. That's what it's going to come down to, that Vista Marietta defense. I'll go 42-38 Centennial. I'll give your boy, the great Aaron Ruth, a field goal. So they'll score uh, five touchdowns in a field goal. Why not? <laughs> 60 yards for the great Bambina. For that tonight, maybe. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be close either way. As you mentioned, last year's game went down to the wire, a two-point conversion, which was the, the difference in the ball game. So we're expecting another close game tonight at Centennial. And that's an 8 o'clock game, right? So you're going to be out there yes. late. And it's on a undisclosed uh, sports network. Some uh, startup TV station. Yeah. So. And uh, so the game's going to go along. Adam Jexler and I, our, our local uh, junior guru on the video staff, will be out there. Uh, we may be past his bedtime, uh, <laughs> knowing this young buck. I may have to get him home past curfew. Hopefully the game ends by 11 o'clock. It should be a thriller. <laughs> Do not disappoint, but be sure. Not, not that uh, random network that we were talking about. Keep it right here on hsgametimepe.com for all your coverage that, on all of the games tonight. That's right. You don't have to watch yeah. the TV broadcast because Chris and I will be back on HS Game Time later tonight. It won't be a live show, but check back around 1130, maybe midnight once this Inland Division Championship uh, concludes, and we'll have all the highlights from this game, Citrus Hill against Norda Vista for the Eastern title, and Chris's game, Vista Marietta taking on Centennial for the Inland title. For Chris Erickley, I'm Pep Fernandez, and we'll see you a little bit later tonight. We'll have halftime updates on we HS will. Game Time as well, so please keep it here, and we'll keep you posted with the very latest from the CIF Championship games. Javier, if you want to zoom in on the warm-ups a little bit but more, we'll let people take a look here at Norda Vista High School as the Braves are set to battle the Citrus Hill Hawks for the Eastern Division Championship. We'll see you in just a little bit here on HS Game Time.